<laughs> All right. Um, Monoko, would you please do the roll call? Okay, Chair Hosseini. Here. Governor Kuntz. Here. And Governor Morton. Here. Chair Hosseini, you have a quorum. Great. Um, I'm going to call on uh, Mayor Moyo uh, to provide remarks. Um, but before she starts, Mayor, I'm so proud of you. Uh, you've been around the state and meeting people and uh, making your case. I hope all of our mayors and are uh, just like you, uh, providing that go around and, and trying to make the economic development for the area. Thank you. And, thank you. And That's you very kind of you. Thank you. Well, first of all, I want to thank each of you for having giving us the opportunity to talk today. And uh, Chairman Husseini and members of the Select Committee, thank you. Chancellor Brogan, it's nice to see you and have you here and see a familiar face. Um, again, thank you for the opportunity to present to you how critically important the emerging field of digital technology is for our city and for the entire state of Florida. To fully appreciate what we have accomplished, what we are currently doing, and what we are planning to do, we are directing our remarks this afternoon, not to you as three members of the Board of Governors, but to you as three successful individuals in the business world. Individuals who I know understand how to maximize a return on investment by taking the initiative to make an investment grow. There's only one issue that hangs in the balance that has the potential to impact the overall growth of our city. That issue is job creation and whether the decisions made here today either support the creation of new employment and industry here in Florida or whether they abruptly and permanently put an end to what has been a three-year process today, today that promises concrete, measurable outcomes. Our city has invested three years and millions of dollars in the idea that FSU can serve and already is serving as a catalyst to create new economy and an industry here in Florida. First, a brief history of our investment to date. We have paid $2 million of our taxpayers' money as promised in exchange for a fully accredited up and running Bachelors of Arts program with students and faculty in place. We've taken $6 million additional dollars and placed it in the bank to use as hard cash dollars to attract businesses to our city that are interested in hiring the talented pool of young minds graduating from this program. Keeping our young children, our young students here in Florida is tantamount. During this transition, we've set aside $200,000 to assist FSU with the cost of rent for their administrative and classroom space for 28 students, their instructors, and all administrative personnel. Last year, we hired a full-time economic development director who has been charged with growing a digital media cluster, an industry cluster, using FSU as incubator. Also remaining in place from our original commitment is an additional $15 million bonding incentive available for a developer to build a digital technology building or buildings. For three years, we have worked to put all the pieces in place needed to create a new digital media industry cluster in our city and in our state. There are three essential elements to this plan. First, an academic program able to produce highly specialized and uniquely talented individuals. Private, second is private industry willing to locate around that academic program to take advantage of the opportunity to partner with the program and capitalize on ready-made pool of available talent. And thirdly, a city that provides two things. First, an environment and lifestyle in which companies want to live, work, and play. And second, the promise to make a significant investment to attract and retain those companies. These are not pie-in-the-sky economic hopes. And as we stand here today, 
there are real companies ready to invest heavily in this plan. They stand ready to make, take the steps to either move or expand their businesses and operations in order to partner with our city and with FSU. The only thing standing in their way is uncertainty. What we have been working towards for the past three years is not unlike Governor Jeb Bush's vision of creating a biotech corridor in our state. What began as Scripps Research in a single building has expanded into an entire biotech cluster surrounded by startups and spin-off companies covering over 20 square miles. Digital animation and imaging holds the very same promise. With the exit of digital domain, the private industry piece was briefly lost. But within the days of its departure, several companies approached our city wanting to step in. There are several companies that have met with us, scouted locations to relocate, and said they are ready to go. The only reason they haven't moved forward is because of the recent uncertainty that has brought us here today. Several businesses have or are in the process of submitting letters of interest, which, as you know, is the necessary first step before we are able to begin crafting relocation incentive plans. They don't know if FSU is staying or going. They step forward believing FSU would be a long-term partner. But they have made one thing crystal clear. If you pull FSU, these companies will walk away from the table and will not come back. They are not interested in partnering with a program unless it has all three of the elements I mentioned earlier. And to them, our city is one of the essential ingredients. If the decision is made to move the students out of our city, these companies and their jobs, the economic development that comes with those jobs, and the promise of a new industry in the state of Florida will be lost. To recreate this elsewhere would be a significant challenge. And if you try, you are sacrificing our progress with no promise of success elsewhere. The companies have all indicated that the city's fiscal commitment to a critical, is a critical part of the deal. It is a commitment we stand ready to follow through on. I don't think it is a com the kind of commitment you will find elsewhere. Also, as we stand here, developers are also anxiously waiting to take advantage of a prime piece of real estate in our downtown, owned by the city, and able to construct a new, new unique urban academic complex where the businesses, students, and the city can move forward with our plan to create jobs and bring an entirely new industry to the state of Florida. It is important that we have a clear picture of what has happened up to this point. First, to emphasize the commitment we have shown over the past years. Second, to remind the members of the board that we wouldn't be here talking about this program if it were not for our city's investment. It was our $2 million that helped create a, the very curriculum we are here discussing today. Third, I also mentioned the dollars to remind you that these dollars are critical to the attraction and retention of the kinds of private sector businesses that will make this a success. Let's get down to specifics. Right from the start, I want to make it clear that we are not talking or seeking to continue down a hypothetical path of economic development. The principal architect over the past three years has been Kim Briesmeister, our CRA director, our community redevelopment executive director. I'm going to ask her to come up and talk about some of the specifics around our business attraction. Kim? Thank you, Mayor. Um, very briefly. Um, our role, I'm not as tall as the mayor, so I've got to get this down. Okay. <laughs> um, our role in the redevelopment agency is obviously public-private partnerships and the development uh, that takes place in the city. And as the mayor stated, um, FSU is there. It's operating, it's functioning, the infrastructure is there, the students are there. And as she stated, those businesses and what our goal of attracting them is, they're there. So if I could, just one minute, I wanted to share with you 
um, how deeply um, invested these, com these uh, companies already are in joining us. Uh, and we do have a common objective. It is the students, because without those students and without the initiative as it's sitting, these companies wouldn't have come. For us, and our goal again is to provide you and those students the platform to employ them. So it's about jobs, and that's the role really that we want to play and that we're committed to playing is the agency. One of the companies is operating under a confidentiality agreement. We refer to them as Pod 15 because, as I'm sure you know, you understand, some of these companies don't want to, to talk about moving until they have some certainty. Um, they're a global network of studios. They're in Berlin, Frankfurt, Munich, Stuttgart, LA, London, uh, Beijing, and now Toronto. They are a very, very established industry leader, and they've been operating for over a decade. They are a real company, and they're knocking on the door, very interested in coming. Um, they called the plan to integrate FSU with what we're doing a brilliant concept. They really um, are very invested in coming. The second company is a defense contractor, so it's not just about film and industry. Um, they've operated for over a half a century, and they provide high-tech electronics, avionics, and communication systems. They employ currently 2,000 individuals, and again, they have huge uh, job expansion plans. Based on uh, the model that we've put together, uh, they said that they're waiting to see what you all decide. Then we have two companies that are currently located in the region. Um, they're already in South Florida. One is Olympusat and one is Watermark Medical. Um, in fact, we had a conference call today with one of your governors uh, about, or from the CEO of Watermark, talking about um, his, his desire to move to West Palm. He was <coughs> contemplating moving to Atlanta. Um, he had many motives for doing that, but as soon as he understood what was going on with FSU and with the platform that we had set up there, um, he indicated he is committed, and those were his words today even, he's committed to West Palm Beach. So again, it's not just about attracting new companies, it's growing and developing those companies that are already there that we don't want to lose them to another state. We want to keep them there. Um, the existing companies, again, are important because in economic development speak, as again, I'm sure you all are aware, it's harder and more expensive to bring in new companies than it is to expand ones. So over 80% of the jobs that are created are going to be coming from the companies that are there. The CRA is committed to trying to develop those relationships. That's what the agency is there for. Um, and finally, the last one is Stargate Studios. Uh, Stargate's an international production company. They provide uh, advanced production services, state-of-the-art post-production, um, very, very well-emphasized based uh, LA company. And uh, again, they had sent unsolicited. We didn't go to them. They came to us because, because FSU is in our backyard. Uh, and they came in and said, we want to be there. Um, in their letter, and they sent a letter, the president of Stargate is Darren Frankel. He sent a letter to the mayor last week. Uh, they also, they're in LA, Vancouver, Toronto, Berlin, Dubai. Um, they have media production centers, but what they said is they want to capitalize on the synergism with complementary media and technology companies. That's what these folks are looking for, and that's what we have. It's already there. It's sitting there, and it's operating, and it's functioning today. It's not that we have to create this. The students are there, the infrastructure is there, the CRA is there, and these companies are coming, and they're knocking on the door. Um, he likes our business model, it aligns with their expansion, and they want to establish a location um, in the area. Um, in closing, again, as the mayor stated it, we're already up and running, but you have all the makings um, to create a win-win for not only the students, but also for the job creation that's so important, not only to us in West Palm, but really to the state of Florida. You have the CRA, you clearly have uh, the political uh, boldness coming from the city of West Palm Beach elected officials and our mayor. Uh, we have the legal and financial experts to do this. You have the redevelopment and economic development experts at the table to do it. Um, and we have the private sector now at the table. So the only thing that these folks are telling us right now is we need to do away with the uncertainty. We need to know if this is going to stay and then we will come. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Don't go away because as soon as the uh, mayor finishes, I have a question for you. I want to take a minute to brag about Kim. Let me put this up, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, she is the executive director of one of the most successful CRAs in the state. Um, and I just learned today, uh, in our long ride up here, that um, she has uh, brokered over a $750 million private sector investments uh, since she's been with our CRA um, in her career. So she is 
quite accomplished and very experienced, um, knows how to put together the public-private partnership, uh, and is a very keen economic developer. So from what you've heard Kim say, I think you can see that we're talking about a representative cross-section of businesses and industries that can be very powerful uh, in the new as a new job creation engine. We're talking about the medical industry. We're talking about the defense industry. And of course, we're talking about film. But it's not just film. Um, so and the other part that I think is important to emphasize is that we're t while we're talking about all of these new <coughs> companies coming in and existing companies, there are, there are businesses, industries in Palm Beach County that do digital work. Scripps certainly does digital work. Our hospitals certainly do that. Um, Sikorsky and the aerospace industry, they're sending that work out of state to get it done. They could be sending it right to Palm Beach County. And that's part of what we, we're here today. Um, they understand the potential of the path we've been on for three years, and they're interested in joining us even today without knowing if FSU will be staying or not. This is not about making movies, as I said. It's about the digital imaging and animation business. Digital Im imaging crosses countless industries. And as you've just seen from a few companies we've mentioned today, the potential for job growth is immense. West Palm Beach is not trying to create another FSU, another FAU, University of Florida, UCF, or any other new college campus in our city. We are creating, what we are creating is a digital technology industry. Realize what a tremendous economic opportunity this is for the state of Florida, and what a tragedy it would be to sacrifice its potential and lose the jobs and the growth it will deliver. We need jobs here in our state. The FSU West Palm Beach Partnership holds that potential. Not because I say so, and not because FSU says so, but because private industry says so. They go where the growth is, and where you find that growth, you will find jobs. Don't take away what are almost certain jobs for our state and the promise of a new industry here in Florida. I thank you for your time. We have um, booklets that we're going to hand out to you, and we're here for questions. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. thank you. I really appreciate it. Can you just uh, have your people stand up that have traveled with you all this, this, uh, this far? Uh, thank you for everyone to, uh, that you took your time to come over. Kim, I have a question for you, and, and, and I'm just trying to get the, the vision of um, West Palm Beach, and um, you were very eloquent, or Mayor was, that about this, is, this piece of property is downtown. It's a very uh, preferred area. And in your vision, there will be a 50,000 square feet uh, be given to FSU, and that could be used as a uh, um, classroom, studio, green room. Am I correct? The original, uh, the original deal that was contemplated with FSU had a 150,000 square foot building in phase one. 50,000 of it was for production space, 50,000 of it was for FSU, and 50,000 of it was administration, of which some of which would have been administration as well. The site in particular holds approximately 500,000 square feet of development capacity. That is not, however, the only site. It is one that was contemplated in the original deal. Is it today 50,000 or 150,000? Today, the, the part that was for FSU was 50,000, but the building was 150,000. And, and if I may add, um, that land is, is, is in our possession. I know there was some question during the bankruptcy proceeding, but we had a very strong reverter clause, mm -hmm. thanks to our attorney and Kim, and it's in our possession. You, in the packets we give you, you will see letters from developers who are anxious to develop that land and to be a part of this whole um, resurgence, this whole uh, development of an industry cluster. We have uh, reputable developers who are very interested in building on this land, and they see the potential of... of yeah. uh, let, me, uh, let me just, can I, can we just, um, Mayor, let me just finish this with Kim. Um, so I, I get an understanding of, and I know we got disrupted by a phone call when I was meeting with you. So you said that, that uh, you know, my understand. So today we talked about fifty thousand, right? You said on the on the, and then you said there are other places downtown that a student can go take courses there and all that. Am I correct? 
They currently are not operating on that site. They're currently operating on the second floor of City Place, and then there still is a tremendous amount of developable land in and around the downtown area. So that's there's it. opportunity. Yes. Right. Right. And that's, that's what you said. Now, I asked a question. I said, my question was this. I said, you know, some of our students take uh, classes, and then they come out of the class. They have 10 minutes to get to the next class. And, and you said, well, this is a little bit different. Uh, because when they're in a classroom, a studio, green room, all in one place, and they work all together throughout the day. Was, am I correct? That also, yes. yes. Could, yes. So, uh, so then this was my question. I said, um, well, we have our students um, in Tallahassee, they go through one year, and then the second year they come to Tallahassee, and they still have to take some lower level courses. Um, some lower level courses and that they do have to come from a class to go out of the class. And then you said, yes, but either you or the mayor and said yes, but there is partnership between FSU and other colleges, universities, and you mentioned some names. Can you tell us those names? Yes, and for clarification again, um, it was Palm Beach Atlantic and Northwood University and um, some of the others that are in the area. There are not agreements set today. I would defer to FSU to talk about the curriculum and the progression of the curriculum. I don't believe today they need those agreements to do what they're doing today, nor to accomplish the mission that we currently have laid out for you. But there are universities, and the education and the coalition of those education entities is it exists, it's there. But, but you envision that they can be in a partnership with some of these colleges and universities to offer, you know, I'm, I'm gonna go eventually to FSU and ask the same question from yes. them because we have not seen that. And that surprised me that, you know, you said on, on the, um, uh, so they can do a stuff in a partnership with colleges and, <coughs> and, and university. Okay, I think um, um, I'm gonna ask uh, my fellow governor, no question? No, thank you. Uh, Governor Morton. Thank you. I'll, for the record, this is uh, Edward Morton. I, I received uh, some phone calls yesterday from the businesses that are, I, I think, referred to here, maybe, frankly, uh, under the, the pseudonames. Uh, I tried to pin them down with specifics. And the responses I got back were, were very interested. We uh, would really like to pursue the feasibility. We want to um, understand better. Uh, they were not as dramatic as I thought they might be about FSU <clears throat> staying. They were more interested, I thought, in what we could do for them collectively. Uh, do you have anything to, today, evidence <clears throat> of what I would call commitment, people willing to invest money in our state. And I do agree with your presentation that 80% of the jobs in economic development come from existing businesses. I understand that. They're within the state, so they would, it would seem to me they would have the opportunity to migrate wherever around the state they think they may get the best deal, frankly. Uh, do you have any evidence of real commitment? Uh, again, Governor Morton, if you define real commitment, um, as you know, when a company decides they're going to look at a location, the first thing they're going to do is look at the receptiveness of the city. They're going to determine if it's economically feasible and viable. They're probably going to see if there's any incentives that would motivate them to go one place versus another. And then they're going to determine whether or not they want to go or not. So we're at this stage right now where no company, quite frankly, today is going to sign on a dotted line with the uncertainty that's out there. And they can't sign on the dotted line at this initial stage. It's just too early in the phase of the development of this digital media cluster we're creating. It would have been like asking someone you know, from a future company that now is with uh, Max Planck or, or Scripps that they were looking at it, but it takes time to develop that cluster. And I think that's an important message because that's what we need is that time to transition, to take those businesses. You, you have in the packet that was given to you the letter from Stargate and perhaps who else you spoke to. If they have indicated this degree of interest and in, in our economic development experience, that's where it starts. We know how to take it from this and turn it into a live entity that locates in our city. But quite frankly, no, today we're not gonna be able to hand you a document that they have signed. Uh, may I? Continue, if I, please? If I could just add to that. 
Um, Digital Domain uh, left us in September. Um, it's early February. We have not done any recruiting. We have not sought any businesses. They have reached out to us um, and have said, expressed interest, but as Kim said, um, a good piece of that is knowing that FSU is going to be there. So um, that uncertainty is uh, certainly getting in the way of making any real commitments. Uh, <clears throat> I would also be remiss if I didn't say how much I appreciated your willingness to take time out of your, your day, Madam Mayor, and your entire team to come and, and visit with me as well. I wish more of the communities around our state would embrace economic development with the passion that your team embraces economic development. It is the future of our, of our state's economy, and for that, I would like to thank you and applaud your uh, dedication to your citizens and to your constituents. Uh, has there ever been in the past uh, any effort on the part of the city of West Palm Beach to reach out to Florida Atlantic University and to say to them, we have this phenomenal package of incentives, we have this money that we have set aside, uh, we would like to work with you as the university right here in our neighborhood uh, to construct a similar program. Has that kind of conversation taken place? Um, yes, it has. It has? Yes. And what is the result today? Well, um, you know, again, it's something that we're working on. You know, Pamela is here, and um, she, she was in on the conversation when um, I talked with President Saunders. Um, I think that um, there are lots of opportunities, and I hope that uh, West Palm Beach is in the consideration with Florida Atlantic University. Um, if, to this date, we have not had any outreach from them. Um, we uh, also believe that if FSU uh, were in our city, that it could not only benefit um, some of the closer universities, but also Florida Atlantic University. We're talking about the medical industry. They have a wonderful medical school. We're talking about engineering. They have great engineers. Um, the, the possibilities for internships and for cl cost cl cross classes is huge. Um, it could be a benefit to all of us involved, and, and I, I, for one, would certainly welcome that. Thank you. Mayor, thank you so much. Uh, Kim, thank you so much. Thank you for coming. We really appreciate thank it. Thank you for giving us so much time. We appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. My pleasure. Okay. <clears throat> um, we're going to go to presentation by Florida State University. Um, FSU has been asked to address the following. A, provide a side-by-side -side cost comparison for maintaining the existing film offerings in West Palm Beach versus relocating existing faculty and students to Tallahassee. B, describe the existing Bachelor of Fine Arts in film production, major in animation and digital arts, and how it relates to the major offered on the main campus. Describe other film program and research activities existing or planned in the West Palm Beach location and the estimated cost for full implementation. D, explain why it is important from an academic and economic perspective that the current and future film offering be located in West Palm Beach. Provost Stokes, the Select Committee, look forward to your presentation. Thank you so much for this opportunity to meet with you and talk about our program in, in Tallahassee and in uh, West Palm. Uh, I really appreciate the chance to see you um, uh, here today. Um, what I'd like to do is begin by giving the committee some important background to the history and operations of our College of Motion Picture Arts in hopes of providing you with some insight into the actions we took in West Palm Beach, as well as the motives that might inform the actions we wish to take in the future. Uh, first, in 1989, the Florida Legislature created and funded what would become the College of Motion Picture Arts, and it gave it a clear mission to prepare students for successful careers in the motion picture industry. 
From the very beginning, faculty recognized that the college was created by government in collaboration with higher education to produce valuable outcomes for industry, such as jobs, skilled labor, and the commercialization of intellectual property. Therefore, the faculty has always been composed of practitioners from industry who have earned hundreds of impressive motion picture credits and major awards. They are professional filmmakers who have made their names in industry, preparing students for careers in industry. As a result, motion picture arts faculty have always measured the success of their students by the extent to which their graduates contribute to industry. Specifically, every year, faculty and staff gather data from their colleagues in industry that measure the employability of graduates and the quality of their creative work. Faculty evaluate the data on an annual basis to determine ways to improve and sometimes completely rewrite the curriculum so that the current trends of industry are continuously informing the college's curriculum. We know of no other film school in the nation that has this kind of feedback relationship with industry and has proven to generate some remarkable outcomes. Nearly 100% of the college's students begin working in the field within six months of graduation, and more than 95% of all of its graduates since the college was established currently enjoy careers in the field. However, faculty recognize that there is still much work to be done to meet the mission given to it by the state. Clearly, the legislature created the college to foster industry in the state of Florida. However, more than 90% of motion picture arts students leave the state within six months of graduation, most within the first week. The key, of course, is building an industry in the state that is robust enough for graduates to stay and innovate in Florida. Faculty have worked in a number of ways to foster and promote industry in the state. Dean Patterson is a governor appointee of the Florida Film and Entertainment Advisory Council, which informs efforts of the Department of Economic Opportunity to foster growth of this industry in Florida. Judd French, our Director of Research and Innovation Initiatives, also serves as the Executive Director of Florida's Digital Media Industry Association, the Digital Media Alliance of Florida and on the executive board of Film Florida, and has been leading the development of, the Flor of Florida's digital media industry since 2002. Of course, we've had faculty members produce feature films in the state, but that's not always something that they control, and sometimes they are required to shoot out of state. However, there is some good news on the horizon. Today, advances in technology, digital media, and web applications are creating profound changes in film and media industries that provide Florida with some exciting opportunities to develop high-wage jobs in the field, foster economic development, and encourage graduates of its premier film school to stay and build their careers at home. The use of digital media storytelling is now ubiquitous in American industry and spans a range of fields that includes motion pictures, but also medicine and the military. In 2010, government once again collaborated with higher education with the goal of producing valuable industry outcomes. This time, the city of West Palm Beach committed to building a relationship with Florida State University to launch a major in animation and digital arts, foster research in digital media to facilitate economic development, and establish co-located business partners invested in training and research. At this time, I'd like to introduce Frank Patterson. Dean Patterson has produced and directed movies and commercials for more than 25 years. He taught filmmaking at the University of Texas and Chapman University before joining FSU. Under his leadership, FSU students won more Student Academy Awards and Student Emmys combined in a single year than any other film program in the United States. 
The film industry has recognized Dean Patterson as one of the nation's top mentors to a generation of Hollywood filmmakers. I'd like for Dean Patterson to come up here and continue to talk to you about the objectives let me, uh, of Let me just, I just want you to do an opening, uh, and I'm, I'm just going to do an opening myself, you know. I just want, and then we'll go and make presentations, other presentations, and then we go to question and answers. Actually, Dean, you can just uh, make your presentation from there sure. as soon as I get done. Okay, well, um, thank you, um, uh, Mr. Stokes, I uh, really appreciate it. Um, and I want to thank, thank everyone for coming today. There are people who have traveled um, far today to join us to discuss the issue that is important to a state university system. We are grateful for the support. Um, Provost Stokes, I know, and you and your people, you drove all the way from uh, Tallahassee, thank you. Um, also, we appreciate that Mayor uh, Moyo of West Palm Beach has been so engaged in this conversation. Um, we are especially fortunate that she was able to join us today. Actually, she had three votes here today for all her hard work, you know. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> First and foremost, the Board of Governors is proud of FSU and its nationally acclaimed film school. We're proud of you guys. We want to see FSU Film School continue the successes it has had for the past 20 years. Economic development is important to the Board of Governors and the state university system. Economic development is at the forefront of governor's agenda and the legislator's priorities. A recent study shows that our system has a statewide economic impact of $80 billion each year and helps generate more than 700,000 public and private sector jobs. The Board of Governors and each one of our universities embrace the role we have in contributing to the economic development of our state. Universities are no stranger to public private partnerships. For example, both Scripps Institute and Max Planck, as the mayor mentioned, partnered with one of our universities in Palm Beach County. There are many other examples across the state. However, none of those other partnerships have been connected with what some are calling the worst economic development deal in Florida history. That's what brings us here today. We need to remember that the Constitution empowered the Board of Governors to operate, regulate, control, and be fully responsible for the management of the whole university system. That means it is our duty to make decisions that are in the best interest of the whole system and our students. As I understand it, the process to award Digital Domain a $20 million investment from a state short-circuited, long-standing, and important economic development processes, and now the state is seeking to recover those funds. This process is in place to ensure due diligence on untested ideas so that we can guard against situations like we face today. These processes and our own God regulations foster entrepreneurship by helping minimize risk for Florida's taxpayers and in this case, our students, and helping to guarantee return on investment for everyone. This board's first commitment is always to the students and their families. We owe it to our students to come up with an answer, the best possible path to a return on their investment. We have to look specifically at what benefits the students and their families, families because what benefits them is what benefits the system and the state. 
This board believes in quality. Whatever decision we, can, we make today, our board must ensure that FSU is able to continue to offer the world-class film degree that it has been offering for decades. So with that, uh, Provost Stokes, I am turning it back to you. You can introduce um, um, your people, the dean, and, um, and then we're, um, we're more than happy to get more information from you. And then we will turn over to our board members to, for questions. Thank you very much. Well, I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to Dean Patterson uh, to continue the conversation about what we've done in West Palm. Governor Husseini, would you prefer that I? No, you're fine right okay. there. Wonderful. And thank you for your remarks. I, I, I am honored to have the career I have, and I think I've been recognized mainly because of my um, long history of doing what's best for the students, and uh, I, I live for that. So I really appreciate your remarks. Um, I'm going to start with uh, an overview of our objectives uh, in West Palm to continue what the provost was saying. The faculty created the animation and digital arts major and the proposed research institute in West Palm Beach to meet the following objectives. To stem the tide of FSU film graduates who typically move to Los Angeles and New York to launch their careers. To foster the development of new business and intellectual property in the digital media industry within the state of Florida. To create high wage jobs in the digital media industry within the state of Florida to provide students with industry-leading technical training in specialized areas of digital media development, production, and distribution, and to co-locate and collaborate with businesses interested in creating research and intellectual property in the digital media field. Those were our objectives going into West Palm. Our current status is to meet those objectives, last year we, the college matriculated a class of freshmen and a class of transfer students in the animation and digital arts major. Faculty also completed an 18 month study of the digital media research field in preparation, preparation for forming a digital media research institute and the digital media cluster. To this end, our faculty have drafted an application for a university research institute that includes the institute's mission, our area of focus, um, staffing and budget. Faculty have also identified and enter into uh, discussions with several uh, digital media businesses interested in co-locating uh, with Florida State University in West Palm. Uh, that is something, of course, that began um, um, over a year ago, I, I guess. Um, and I think the product uh, or the responses of the companies that have made themselves publicly known and the ones that are not quite comfortable to make themselves publicly known at this point is a result of about 18 months of work. Uh, I think it's gotten, been a little confusing in the public narrative that uh, somehow we were only going to be tied to one company. This whole idea from the beginning was to create a cluster of companies to benefit our program and our students. And then finally, um, the faculty worked with the city to help develop uh, the West Palm Beach Economic Development Program. Going forward, um, here are our key goals. After completing an assessment to determine the future location of our programs, we determined that our goals continue to be one, to provide our students with a quality major in keeping with our national reputation um, in the film industry, speaking to your point, Governor Husseini, and to ensure that our major and research program continue to meet the needs of the state economy, especially the need to create high paying jobs. And third, um, meet the guidelines and criteria, of course, of our accrediting body, which is very important to us. Um, the committee asked for uh, a comparison of the program, the cost of the program in West Palm Beach and the cost of the program uh, in Tallahassee if we were to operate, um, you know, a completely uh, transition to Tallahassee. I'm going to hand out some budgets. Um, which we can, I'd love to talk about and take questions after this presentation, but let me just give you the highlights here. Um, the costs associated with delivering the major in Tallahassee and West Palm Beach are relatively comparable with the following exceptions. You'll see that the major moving to Tallahassee will, will increase some costs associated with facilities, um, and the moving the major to Tallahassee would reduce certain overhead expenses uh, associated with staff support. Um, we can talk about the details of that, but they're fairly, everything's, the costs are relatively comparable. 
Um, also, moving the major to Tallahassee will cause one-time costs, non-recurring costs, associated with the teach-out plan required by SACS, um, which is probably a three-year process, we estimate. Uh, replacing faculty and staff who will choose not to re relocate to Tallahassee. I think you've heard uh, the certain faculty that are industry, um, come from industry, are not interested in locating to Tallahassee, and there'll be costs associated with replacing those faculty. And then the relocation, of course, of personnel, equipment, and uh, certain facilities. Um, going forward, I'm going to ask Dr. Sider, who is a filmmaker and research, uh, to, to describe um, um, uh, the program comparisons, because I've just given you the idea, uh, the, the a sense of the cost. And I'm going to ask Dr. Sider to, as you requested, to give a description, uh, a comparison of the two programs in Tallahassee. And, and West Palm, uh, the animation program and the digital, I mean the animation program and the production program in Tallahassee. Uh, Dr. Sider is a filmmaker and a researcher who led the faculty in the development of the animation and digital arts major. Um, before joining FSU, um, we stole him from USC's film school, I'd like to say, but anyway, and he, he played a central role in developing USC's Institute for Multimedia Literacy, a research and teaching center that integrates media production skills and teaching and learning. Dr. Sider serves as the director of the animation and digital arts major and is one of the faculty members working on the college's proposed digital media research institute. Dr. Sider, would you compare? Uh, is that the information that you're going to send? Uh, uh, are you going to send it to us? Can I pass? I'm going to sure, pass please out pass the it, budget. Yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, it, does it, it, in that information, does also include, uh, we ask for the list of, you know, um, I saw um, Provost Stokes at the presentation to the board talked about $16 million cost of relocating um, to uh, Tallahassee, and we asked for the detail of the $16 million. Is that in there or that's separate? It basically is, but could I, I'd like to clarify something about the $16 million. What I was trying to convey was that the costs were recurring costs. and So we had recurring costs and one-time costs. So I, what, all I did was I took our, our estimate at that time was $1.6 million. I was just trying to describe to people what that would mean over a 10-year period. I wanted it to be very clear that these were, we had to have recurring monies for the program and not just one-time monies. So I just threw out the 10-year just to say, so in 10 years that would be $16 million. But, you know, that's what recurring Because I went back to are. SAC to see what the SAC's requirement was. It was something like three years teach out or something, or at least you have three years. So yeah. I was trying to figure out what yeah. a 16 million yeah. is because I jumped off. I know, When I'm I was sure watching I you on, on, <laughs> yeah. on the thing, I said, wow, and that's, that's a. Uh, I was really trying to make something clear, and it sounds like I actually muddied the water <laughs> with that. So. Can, can I ask a question? Sure, over? sure. Because I'm trying to follow you on that. Even the 1.6 million, just since we're on the topic, yeah. uh, what is the 1.6 million? It's, it's on the budget you just got. And actually, it's closer to 1.7, but what we did was calculate just what it would cost to run the program, what the um, what we pay in salaries, what we pay in uh, to faculty and staff, and uh, what we pay in terms of um, a regular operating budgets, et cetera. So that, um, that is on the sheet that it has been passed out. What I did is I, and when I made that presentation, I said that um, if we had the program in Tallahassee, we would have to reduce our numbers. If we, the plan for staying in West Palm was to build up to a program that would have about 285 students. Um, what I did is say if we moved back to Tallahassee, what we would need to do is reduce the number of students and then we calculated what that cost would be to have a program with that number of students. So that is what you see on your sheet on the far right column is that reduced, uh, the reduced number of students and the cost that we would say, and, and the number is actually closer to 1.7 million than to the 1.6 million that I had mentioned um, uh, in my presentation to the Board of and, Trustees. And, the, and uh, Provost, just I'm sorry for the ignorant question, but the yeah. reason for the reducing the number of students would be what? Sheer of cost, of, of ramping up. We, we always intended it to be a slow ramp up, even in West Palm. We didn't expect to immediately go to such a large program, but we expected that we eventually would and could. There's no sense that we might be able to do that in Tallahassee. 
Um, and certainly, um, I mean, I don't, we just don't know how we would do that. So realistically, um, this seemed a more reasonable uh, uh, outcome for the program in Tallahassee. And, and none of this has anything to do with on the income side, the revenue side, the differential on the higher, the high tuition that the students are paying or the, mm. I mean, this, these are all just the expenses associated with it? Um, because I mean, if you're in Palm Beach, you pay three times more. Right. I mean, I think that's, right. that's question. my question. If you're in Palm Beach, you pay three times more. And so, and so if you're talking about the student costs, right. correct. Um, we're not talking about the student costs here. We're talking about the actual cost, side by side costs of the program. And the reason we have, we wanted to compare apples to apples, which is why you see the two columns that we project if we were to have 285 in Tallahassee because um, we knew what we were projecting for the 285 in right. West Palm. So, but, so this is all based on that you just would never get to the 285. It, if you had apples to apples, it's actually about a push yeah. in, in both yes. places, right? Yes, and, and, and the difference is that, because, that the... Um, you just couldn't get to the 285 in right. Tallahassee. Right. Yeah. Okay. Could I? Yes. Uh, Is the reason why you can't get to 285 in Tallahassee, the capital facilities, the physical facilities that would be located in West Palm Beach, and if the taxpayers had given you $20 million to build facilities in Tallahassee, could you have ramped up to 285? Facilities would be one of the deciding factors. I think that kind of investment, uh, I mean, there are a number of factors, and perhaps Dean Patterson might have a different take on this than I would. My thinking is that um, we, um, you have to have sufficient numbers of faculty to really teach that many students. And one of the reasons we're in West Palm is because we can attract the faculty in this field uh, to West Palm and there seems to be a greater opportunity to build the faculty there. So it's not just about the facilities, it's about being able to attract the personnel that can provide the education to the students. That's not to rule out that. What is it that attracts people to West Palm Beach now the digital domain has gone bankrupt? I don't know. When you say people, I'm sorry, faculty. Well, um, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I come from industry, so. Uh, You're they're, they're the person to answer that. Yeah, the, the attraction is not, has nothing to do with digital domain or not. Uh, sure the has attraction to has to do with, I'm sorry, the attraction for industry members who work as faculty members are not, is not related to digital domain, has nothing to do with digital domain. I mean, I, I just, I will speak for my colleagues in industry. We happen to have one here, so maybe he should speak. Um, it's just a better place my, to work. My question really is, why is it easier to hire people in West Palm Beach without digital domain than it would be in Tallahassee? Uh, <coughs> Well, uh, industry do not want, industry members, most industry members don't want to live in Tallahassee. So is it simply, because it is a nice place to live, by the way. I love that, Tallahassee. That West Palm Beach is we a nice place to live. I mean, is that what this is in essence about? I love about? what it is. <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, let, 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 <laughs> I'm sure I know how you feel May, may, may I, I, may, may I, um, uh, We love that, Tallahassee. Um, Jonathan uh, Stone is one such faculty member who came straight from industry. Um, and may I get him to answer the question? Uh, may I? May I sure. Governor? Well, Board, thank you very much. I'm honored to be here with, obviously, I'm going a out of turn, but to answer the question, um, I was in Los Angeles for several years working in the industry. And to be quite honest, um, when I started hearing about what was going on in West Palm Beach with Florida State University, um, the fact that digital domain was here is a secondary issue for me as faculty. Um, it was really about the collaboration, things that I knew were uh, on the table for the growth here in, in South Florida. Um, just recently I was at a, an award show in LA on Tuesday night and a lot of industry professionals were talking to me about what's going on um, with Florida State in, in, in Florida. A lot of people are looking to come to the state. Um, so. Um, not, nothing against Tallahassee or West Palm, but uh, f in general, it has a lot to do with uh, being in a major metropolitan area. There's easy access for us to keep our f one foot in the business. We have to, as faculty members, we have to continue to educate ourselves and stay up to speed in the business. So being able to have access to New York, London, and Canada to be able to fly back and forth, that's, that's another attractive reason, but also just West Palm is a, 
is a great area. Um, it offers a great opportunity, I think, for um, faculty members. And Governor Morton, I just want to add, I'm in the business of bringing faculty, of bringing industry people to the school. That's basically what I do, is talk people from my industry to come teach and work and present at the film school. Um, it's been a lot easier to be able to say that you can present in West Palm. Yeah, Governor, I don't know where you want to go. I said another financial question, so we're on. Absolutely, go ahead. Yeah. Ask your question. Thank you. From the student's perspective, when you all in, cost to live, cost to go to school, everything, is it more or less expensive for the, from the student's perspective to be in West Palm Beach or in Tallahassee? Well, I think if you're an out-of-state student, it's a lot more expensive to be in Tallahassee. But if you're an in-state student, um, it's more expensive to be in West Palm. Um, one of the uh, one of the uh, one of the things about being an off-campus, off the main campus, is that uh, students can be asked to pay um, the going rate, what it costs to offer the program, and the the program has been subsidized. Um, so they're not bearing the full cost of that, um, but they are paying those costs. Um, whereas, obviously, at, on the Tallahassee, on, on the main campus, they pay their in-state tuition, which doesn't cover a third of the cost of their education. Um, and, and just the living, I would assume, the living costs would be I, cheaper in Tallahassee. I'm not clear that that's the case. Um, I haven't done a direct comparison of what the housing costs are um, in Tallahassee versus um, uh, West Palm, but I didn't have the impression that the, the housing costs were greater. It's just simply the cost of the program itself. The, the tuition itself being three times as much, obviously. That yeah, what I will say is that, you know, if. It, it, there's no question that the cost of the program to the students is higher in West Palm. Mm -hmm. um, but I would also say <coughs> that the <coughs> rates that they pay for the program, uh, or will pay next year for the program, um, are significantly um, less than what is charged by comparable programs across the country. So the, I, I, don't, I did not bring those figures with me, but um, the cost of going to these types of programs is usually very high. Uh -huh. And one estimate that I remember seeing was closer to $40,000. Uh -huh. um, so someone here might actually have the specific. Oh, that's okay. You answered my question. Thank so. you. Um, <clears throat> so if the students come back to Tallahassee, you couldn't charge them, um, I'm curious, you, you couldn't charge them the $18,000. They go back to the normal, what you charge in a state, if they're in a state students. That would be correct. They would, if they were on the main campus, they would, they would. Um, so I'm curious them. of the mm -hmm. number of students, because if you're from out of a state, mm -hmm. um, you will pay whatever, wherever you are out of a state because it's much higher number. Mm -hmm. um, um, how many of your students in Palm Beach are out of a state students? Not very many. Not many very of many. Them, so I these are our own students, our own, that from Florida that go to um, there are that, that will change. That will change because okay. uh, we we expect to see the same profile that we see in our current program in Tallahassee, where about forty five percent are out of state. And how many students are there today? Can you refresh my memory in the program? We had twenty seven students that were there yeah. in the fall it, as transfers, and then we also have um, how many as freshmen? Uh, I think eighteen. Eighteen as freshmen. Oh, I'm sorry. In okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so okay. we obviously have students in Tallahassee right now. Yeah, those are in but, Tallahassee. But on the West Palm Beach campus. Yes, in West Palm, that's correct. Yes, I was counting just the West Palm students. So, um, Dean, I was looking at the, the, um, the uh, president's report, which was just outstanding. You know, it was a lot of information. One of the things that I saw in the total number of students, and I saw the film school last year kind of had a drop in number of students. Number of student enrollments? In, in film school, yes. No, sir, I don't think so. So I, I'd like to share with that with you when, when uh, we get an opportunity. I'll send it to you. I, I was surprised. Sure. You know, it was, 
It was like t almost 10% drop, if I'm not mistaken. I was surprised myself. Uh, I, yeah, it's, it's mistaken information. This is something I deal with every day. Right. We have 30 seats that are available to our undergraduate students and 30 seats that are available to our graduate students. We have 4,000 people a year that want to go to this program. We interview 1,000 for 200. We interview, we have 1,000 full-fledged applications. We interview 120 for 30 spots. We fill every seat. There's, there's just no so way So how many total number of students in film school do you know? In, in, at the film school right now, in yes. currently enrolled, maximum is 150, but probably, you know, because there's people get ill or we probably have 147, so I can look it up for you. Okay, um, that could have been other, uh, part of other maybe colleges and all that that mix it with this, but I yeah, will. I'm not sure where you saw that data, but just. Yeah, I just saw that a couple of days ago, and I will share it with sure. you. Sure. And I, and I knew you're always full, everybody's standing in line to get in. I knew I mean, I, that, I, and I was. That's why I wanted to um, share with you um, on that. Okay, now uh, with that, uh, Provost, or, or um, where would you like to go? We want to go uh, to Dr. Sider. You requested a description of the program, the, the difference between the animation program in West Palm and the production program in Tallahassee. Right. Dr. Sider wrote the program for one and led the faculty in the other, so he's the most qualified to give that description. Great. Thank you. Dr. Sider? Thank you. I th I'd like to also like to um, thank the board for their commitment to quality education in the state of Florida, and particularly your commitment to the students and putting the students first, because that's really, I mean, we have an unusual relationship with our students. We work very, 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 very closely with them throughout their time with us, um, and to see that you have that commitment to the students is really, really um, um, great, so I thank you. Um, so to compare the two programs, the, we have the production program uh, in, in Tallahassee and the animation and digital arts program in West Palm Beach. Um, and they, they, they share the same uh, curriculum. I think we have a slide. Mm -hmm. in, they, they share the same core curriculum. Uh, it's the same degree program, but a different major. Um, and by way of comparing these and shedding some light on our program in West Palm Beach, I wanted to talk a little bit about the similarities and the differences of the two programs. Um, so it, the, both of the programs are designed in such a way that the freshman year is where the students devote much of their energies to their liberal studies requirements. And then in their sophomore, junior, and senior year, it's an immersive uh, lockstep curriculum for our students. Um, and um, what that means is, is that they're, they're working 24-7. Um, and um, the, way we, the way we structure that and the focuses of that curriculum, both in, in Tallahassee and in West Palm Beach, revolve around um, a focus on storytelling. It's really where much of our national reputation uh, has emerged from, is, on st is around the art of storytelling. Um, and both of these programs, we use that as the lens of, of, for, for getting at student learning in a whole variety of areas, whether it be learning technical or craft skills or learning about history and aesthetics and screenwriting and things like that. Um, so it, it goes beyond just technical instruction. Uh, which is also a little bit unusual for, for programs that focus on animation and visual effects, uh, which uh, most programs around the country don't tend to have that kind of focus on storytelling that we do. Um, we have a very project-centered approach to, to learning. Uh, so our curriculum is structured around, during those, those three years in their sophomore, junior, and senior year, around a series of film projects that the students work on. Uh, so they're working very collaboratively with, e with each other. They're serving in different crew positions on each of their classmates' films, in addition to making their own. And all of the courses that they take feed into that production process. So it's a very tightly knit, very, very uh, intricately uh, structured curriculum for the students in that regard. Um, and it's very hands-on. And also preparing students for industry, which you've, you've heard a lot about already today in terms of our, our real focus on preparing students when they graduate to get jobs in the industry. This is not, not a program that is focused around um, uh, sort of experimental filmmaking, for example. It's very, very geared towards industry, and it's one of the reasons why our students choose our program. Um, and in terms of the differences between the two programs, I, I wanted to focus on a few areas that I think are, are really key to why, why students have gravitated towards the animation program. Um, and and these are areas that the students have identified as being the things that they find most valuable about their education. Um, one is a focus on the, the mode of production. Uh, in Tallahassee, the focus is very much upon live action filmmaking. Uh, so going, you know, going on sound stages and on locations with cameras and flesh and blood actors in a, in a very traditional sense. Uh, this program emphasizes more work on uh, computer generated modes of filmmaking. Um, 
such as uh, creating digitally animated characters, um, environments uh, created digitally, uh, the creation of digital visual effects um, for uh, uh, use within both animated and live action filmmaking. So there's a different model of this. In order to create that kind of work, um, there's a different um, organizational model that's needed in terms of how projects are structured. Uh, uh, traditionally, um, the, the, the kind of work that we're doing in animation and digital arts program requires a lot more work of development and pre-production. You want to make your mistakes early uh, because it's, it takes a lot of time to create the shots and then a lot more time in post-production in terms of working on the, the actual creation of the visual effects and the animation than we do in Tallahassee. So there's a different, slightly different structure to how we organize that. And it also means different crew positions as well for our, for our students in terms of the, the kinds of areas that they can focus on in terms of their craft. Uh, so whereas we emphasize more of the, the live action aspects of the craft in Tallahassee, a lot of our students in, 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 um, in in um, uh, West Palm Beach are focusing on things like visual effects, animation, um, um, and a whole range of those skills that are related to that. Um, and um, uh, the, the, one of the things that, 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 that the, the South Florida area is really attractive for us in this regard and, and part of how we develop the curriculum is that, that this, this side of the industry really benefits from scale. Uh, in other words, if you look, if you look at, at an animated feature film or a visual effects feature film, there are often hundreds of artists working in a diverse range of skill sets to deliver those, those, those shots. Um, and in, in, this, in South Florida, there's, there's um, a great opportunity for uh, having students collaborate um, across schools with other schools in the area that, that have fo focuses on digital media production, often dif with different emphases than we have in our program. So there's a lot of op opportunities for those kinds of collaboration. And I've, I've personally spoken to faculty members from a number of the, the local universities and colleges and also high schools, uh, including like Palm Beach State College, um, Indian River State College, Florida Atlantic, uh, Palm Beach Atlantic, and then high schools in West Palm such as G-Star and Dreyfus. And they've all been very eager uh, to, to, for us to find opportunities for our students to work together. Um, so that's been really, uh, a really, there's a lot of really great opportunities there for the students. Um, the second point is, is technical skills training. Um, because of this very, very specialized nature of a lot of this work and it's extreme, extremely complicated um, um, tools that the students are using to create visual effects um, and animation, um, there's a difference there in terms of the kinds of skills training that we have in West Palm Beach than in Tallahassee. Um, and, um, so, and, and as in Tallahassee, we, we, we focus on the industry standard tools that, that um, are out there in the industry and getting our students working with those tools. So our students are using the same sets of tools as the artists are using at companies like Pixar and, and Lucasfilm and, and other companies like that. Um, and um, as, as a result of that, it, 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 um, it's a program that really requires um, access to a diverse set of educators and, and industry professionals um, because it's so diverse. There's so many different highly specialized skill sets having access to that is very important for us, um, whether it be here uh, in West Palm Beach or in Tallahassee. Um, and um, as, as a result, there's, there's a, we also, in this program in West Palm Beach, we, we allow students to specialize a little bit more than we do in Tallahassee. Um, so they, they start specializing a little bit earlier, uh, partly because the kinds of jobs that, that are gonna be available to them when they graduate really require uh, very, uh, very advanced skill sets in, in specific areas. Um, and the last point I, I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to hand it over to, to Jonathan Stone, is just about the role of, of the faculty expertise um, uh, in, in the different programs. Um, because of these differences in how the movies are made and the kinds of technical skills that's involved, um, it requires uh, different sets of expertise on the part of the faculty than in, than in Tallahassee. Um, and currently that, that kind of expertise does not exist uh, on the faculty in Tallahassee to deliver a lot of the work that we do. Um, and, um, we currently have six, uh, seven faculty members in West Palm Beach um, that I've spoken to about this, and, and six of them have said that they would be unwilling to, to move if the program moved to Tallahassee. Um, and and I, I would be one of those. Um, uh, and, and part of the reason for that is, is the, 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 um, the opportunities for, for research, uh, for the opportunities for collaborating with industry that we've been, we've been fostering in West Palm Beach. Part of it is the, just, uh, the, the, the support of the city. Uh, that we've had, uh, and part of it is just the, 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 
the hard slog of, of getting this um, uh, up and running there. Um, and, um, the, the, uh, and as a result, if, if the program was to, to move, that we'd obviously have to, to address that, that concern of, of how, do we, how do we replace that faculty expertise. And I'll say, what, what impact would that have on the curriculum? Um, and there are certainly some aspects of the curriculum that it would be challenging uh, to replicate if the program was moved. Um, uh, two examples quickly. One is um, uh, Chuck Williams, uh, uh, one of our new faculty members, who is focusing on the development of animated feature films uh, being based out of a lab at our school. So that provides a lot of opportunities for our students to get involved in that process, um, to, to um, participate in pitches and, and rough cut screenings, to have internship and, and work study opportunities um, with Chuck to uh, help research and develop uh, his projects. Um, and, and another is, is um, um, uh, Jonathan Stone, who is our head of digital production. Uh, and he is, uh, has, has, by way of an introduction for Jonathan, he is um, uh, the, uh, our head of digital production and he teaches in our major in animation and digital arts. Uh, he produced visual effects on many high profile movies, including Martin Scorsese's Hugo, which won the Academy Award last year for best visual effects. Um, and Jonathan is also responsible for cultivating relationships with industry partners and developing opportunities to enhance student learning. Um, and uh, what Jonathan has brought to our program is, is a, uh, a focus on the business side of producing visual effect shots. Um, and it's, it's, it's from, from the research I've done of other programs, it's a, it's a pretty unique component to our program to have that, that particular area of focus. And when we've spoken to um, uh, colleagues in the industry, they, they've often gravitated towards that fact as a very attractive aspect of our program because the, the interns that they get and the new hires that they get into their, into their um, divisions know nothing about that. Um, and so it is a very much sought after skill um, in, in for, um, amongst graduates. So You know, I, I, I totally understand uh, yeah. about faculty. Yeah. Faculty is our lifeblood of any university, like doctors for a hospital. You can have a beautiful hospital. If you don't have the right fa you know, doctors, you know, it's not worth anything. And it comes down to the faculties. Faculty is, you know, the lifeblood. But with that said, you know, with no real confirmation of robust industry partner, don't you think the students are better off to be in Tallahassee? I'm talking just on the students. Mm -hmm. So um, that they have, you know, they, they can be dealing with the rest of the students in a film and all the other things that, um, that you have in, in school in Tallahassee? Well, it's, we, we, we uh, surveyed the students and had work sessions with the students to keep them informed about the, the um, ongoing uh, hearings and developments about the program. And uh, the majority of our students said that they would prefer to be in West Palm Beach. Um, so, um, so you know that this whole thing came about about a partnership with Digital Domain. Our students are going to go there. They're going to go work with Digital Domain. I think they pay 18000 to to us and, and, I mean, I said, to university, and then I think there was like eight, nine thousand dollars they paid to digital domain. Am I correct? It was something? That's correct. Yeah, well, eight, nine thousand dollars. There is no digital domain there. The promise, the premise that was made originally that to move to Palm Beach is not there today. It may be there tomorrow, but it's not there today. Am I correct? No, that's not, that's not correct. correct. That's not correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, first of all, a couple of things. Um, we do, we're doing exactly what we promised. I mean, the person who was leading the education on the digital domain side, we hired. That's him. And he is now taking those learning outcomes and bringing them into our curriculum so that we are actually bringing industry into the curriculum the way we talked about. Remember that digital domain was one of a set of companies that we were working with. It was important. Now, uh, let me talk a little bit about the difference in culture. We're a university, we're academics, even though we all come from industry, the way that we deal with information is we go do something well and then we let you talk about it. The way that industry seems to deal with and the way that this narrative was handled publicly was that Digital Domain told everybody what they were doing and what they were gonna do and you all know what happened. But was it, what wasn't included in that public narrative was all the work that we had been putting to building this cluster of companies that we've been working on for near, nearly two years now. And so the 150,000 square foot building, and I think Ms. Briefsmeister might say it was more like 450 at, at the end, but no one ever asked publicly because it wasn't part of the public narrative, who's gonna be in that space? Well, we were working behind the scenes to identify the companies because for us, having one 
industry partner is not valuable, right? We need a cluster. We need a di diversity of companies. Judd's going to speak about the value of clusters, but I'm pretty sure everybody here understands the value of those clusters, and that's what we've been working towards. Let me have um, a Chancellor. Um, I was at the same meeting, too. Um, go ahead, Chancellor. Thank you. Hi, Chancellor. Um, and thank you all, and Mayor, thank you, too, uh, for being here. So you have um, four votes now. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, um, I'm no stranger to the film school. Uh, our home has been used twice. I think once for a baccalaureate experience and one for a, a master's uh, experience uh, for film shoots by the students, and they are extraordinary. Uh, they owned the place, took it over. Uh, on two separate <laughs> occasions, I actually You're think like laugh. lamb's blood, <laughs> we've now been targeted as a shoot location for the film school because they keep coming back, but they're wonderful, and uh, uh, we're, we're more the better for having been exposed to the students. They're extraordinary um, in terms of what they do. Incredibly professional, Thank incredibly you, bright, and leave it the way they found it. Uh, you may notice. That's our rule. I'm so, I'm so glad to hear you say that. <laughs> you, you may notice. I'm a bit fastidious. And, um, and uh, so is my house. And it, when you turn it over to, literally, in some cases, 30 college students and say it's all yours, they are extraordinary in, in the way they do their work. M my question, and this has come up twice now, um, about the, the, the desire to always have other partners under the aegis of digital domain. One of my understandings is that Digital Domain had an exclusivity contract that went out for 10 years uh, that gave them, uh, as, as I was told, exclusive rights. When you talk about Digital Domain saying, this is what we're going to do, this is how we're going to do it, uh, one of the things I understand is that there was an exclusivity to this. Um, well, I'm confused by that. I, well, Vicki? Um, it's in the... By the way, Vicki is Vicki Shirley, our general I know counsel. Vicki Shirley. So, I think I, we all I, know Vicki Shirley. I just turned and yelled, Vicki. Um, I'll sit up a little straight. And, and I'm only saying this because, <laughs> because I'm going to go back to something that, that the governor said earlier, the chair. Um, you know, we are having this conversation not in isolation. I mean, sure. We all remember uh, the tragedy that was the digital domain experience. Um, and I'm the first one to agree, been in lots of economic development deals, they all don't work, that's a fact. Uh, but I think that the time and the vetting that goes in to the creation of great digital, uh, great uh, economic development deals from the state level, the local level, and all of the partnerships, while always long and always tedious and always very prescriptive, pays dividends downstream, more often than not, and again, I think somebody alluded to, to Max Planck and, and uh, Scripps are great examples of uh, two uh, wonderful economic development opportunities right there in, in uh, Palm Beach County that took an extraordinarily long time to partner, to broker, and to guarantee, uh, not just hope, but guarantee return on investment and they, they are doing that. They're meeting all the deliverables. They're wonderful. Um, but to that end, um, there was a certain rush that went out of the room on the digital domain experience, much of that train driven by digital domain, not only their desire to be grounded in both Palm Beach, but also Port St. Lucie as quickly as possible. And there were demands made not only to, for people to come to the table, but also for timing of signing contracts, memos of understanding, and I remember it vividly. Uh, there, there was a fast and furious flurry of legal activity, uh, low on the deliverable side, very high on the expectation side, and we know where all of that ended up, tragically. The state of Florida uh, lost $20 million that they are now trying to get back. Uh, the city of Palm Beach, with all of their great intentions, uh, lost a significant amount of money that they are trying to reclaim in terms of the, the bankruptcy process, I should say. Uh, that's and, and, well, that's not accurate. That's not accurate. Yeah, okay. And the city of Port St. Lucie lost a massive investment. Port St. Lucie may never be the same on the economic development front. Theirs was so significant, and to a city that is relatively still new, uh, by way of economic development. If I mischaracterize the investment of Palm Beach, I apologize, but the point is made. And, and I think no one can back away from the fact that it was an extraordinary tragedy when digital domain went south. 
and a lot of people were left not only with egg on their face, but holding empty bags in their hands trying to figure out where do we go from here. I think the, 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 the nature of what is being proposed, while extraordinarily exciting, who can say it isn't? And, and not only on the part of the city of West Palm Beach, who, who is vested in trying to create a marvelous opportunity in economic development for its city, its county, its state, um, and the people thereof, but clearly Florida State, uh, and everyone is, is respectful of Florida State's exceptional film school, and it is but unparalleled in, in the state of Florida, and certainly I guess some would argue nationally, probably get a fight over that, but nevertheless we think it is. But at the end of the day, trying to take uh, one uh, bad scenario that did not play out for anyone, and now quickly reinvent uh, and cobble together something that is similar uh, with many people who, who maintain that they are interested, enthusiastic, um, fascinated by. Uh, I, I just want to say as the chancellor, um, because what's my, my dog in this fight? Well, you know, I go back to the digital domain deal. Uh, I, I think against some people's advice, that move was fast and furious, and, and it didn't end up going well. And not just advice from people within the state university system, some pretty major economic development proprietors uh, at the state level. Um, we, we went around all of that. We did a fast deal. That deal has not panned out. And I think what you see here is not a, a desire to help students. It's fact. It, it is a desire to help students, it is a desire to help Florida State, it is a desire to help the city of West Palm Beach and the state of Florida, but I think there is, you know, it's the classic case of burn me once, shame on you, burn me twice, shame on me. And I think people are very concerned about what appears to be an exciting opportunity, but it currently is predicated on a good many people's interest and, and enthusiasm, but without the commitments, and when I say commitment, I mean more than a phone call or more than a letter, I mean hard commitments and deliverables necessary uh, to make uh, economic potential economic development deals very low on the risk side. And, and I think that's what everybody is struggling with. And, so and, let's and let's uh, let's get to Vicky. But Vicky, but, before you get there, uh, to uh, Chancellor, to credit to the West Palm Beach, uh, they were very smart. They put a reverter clause on their land, which yeah. was the most important thing they Absolutely. did. Absolutely. So they got the land back. You know, congratulations. Um, let me let me let us just finish with our thing. And Mayor, I mean, we'll hear you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Mazzini. Yes, there there is an exclusivity clause in the BFA agreement, which is not surprising. I'm sure. DDI demanded it. It's in exchange for the significant investment they were making mm -hmm. in their partnership with FSU. This is for a term of 10 years plus mm -hmm. a successive five years. And then you agreed for a following two years, even after the relationship ended, you would not enter into any kind of substantially similar partnership. Sure, but I, I so. now I understand what you're saying, but that okay. was just a matter of right. them protecting the investment. I understand. But in other words, it didn't exclude our students for participating in the program. It didn't include exclude anyone else from collaborating with us. It was not, ex it was exclusive in that they made the investment into the program and wanted to see it. Um, well, it, w it would have prohibited you from enrolling your students in any other program but the DDI FSU partnership. That is what it provides Prohibited for. students from? You couldn't have taken students, in other words, and found another similar DDI partner and had them also enroll in an education program with a co-partner. That's not what this provided for. They had to remain well, we didn't, EDI slash FSU. Well, uh, it's confusing program. to me because our students enroll in the production program right. in, in, in Tallahassee but are not obligated to enroll, enroll in DDI. But if they were going to participate in this program, they had to be in the DDI program. Oh, as well. right, because we were combining the learning Correct. outcomes. It's right. very much like the New York th uh, State Theater where you have. Uh, a, a school like NYU working with the state theater and you have students enroll in the state theater and in NYU so they get the benefits of both. And that was the structure of the program. Of course, there is some exclusivity in that structure. Right. But, but uh, I'm sorry, I misunderstand your, your, your point, I'm Chancellor. I'm not sure I understand. It yeah. sounds like you guys are saying two different things still. Can you read the language? 
Um, sure. It says, in consideration. Because that's very important. Uh, the significant investment made by DDI in this agreement, in particular the funding described in Section 3.2, which was $2,150,000. The university agrees that it will not enter into any agreement substantially similar to this agreement during the term of this agreement and for a period of two years after the termination of this agreement. Additionally, the university will not offer any substantially similar program to any students other than the students enrolled in DDI during the term of this agreement and for a period of two years after the termination of this agreement. That's the exclu exclusivity clause. That seems pretty clear. So that once the students are, have to go and have it with DDI, you cannot go, you cannot, you, you said that your uh, collaboration was not just with digital domain. Right. Am I correct? Right. Not just digital domain, right. they, you know, so you did not think about, well, okay, uh, we, we did this just because of digital domain. That clearly shows that. Oh, no, okay, so this, let me clear this up because sure, that's what that's I wanted great. to say to uh, Chancellor Brogan. I, I, I realize there's a lot of confusion, and, and I think it was because the narrative was really created by digital domain and not by us who are actually delivering the program. We just do our jobs. Um, we have no interest in entering into an agreement like that Again. with any of the other companies. Any of the other. We never had an interest in delivering, entering into an agreement like that with the other companies. We were interested in digital domain for the original reason was one primary reason, which was to find a research partner. Uh, they, they had um, are creators of a lot of intellectual property that we were very excited about in terms of research. And, and I also want to qualify this and say, as you know, we had nothing to do with the economic development decisions that the state or anyone else made. We are educators and researchers and practitioners, and so when we learned the digital domain was going to be coming to the state, we felt obligated to be a party to, the, to that relationship and felt that the opportunity with digital domain was really around intellectual property. And our first contract with digital domain was in 2010, and it was really about trying to identify a way to link what we do in higher education with intellectual property creation that they did in, in creating um, basically uh, three-dimensional imagery, right? Um, we also originally, uh, from the very beginning, as faculty said, well, now if one company is going to come and we can engage in research with that company, we have an opportunity here to use that as a way to get other companies to be involved, and we have now the beginnings of a cluster initiative. We actually could begin to stop, talk to other companies about locating with us in research. Right? And so we began talking about that. And if you look at the original agreements, the building that the city of West Palm was going to collaborate with Digital Domain to build and our square footage was dedicated to research. That was our original thing. And a program, a small graduate program, in emerge, what we described as emerging media in the contract because we didn't quite know what that academic program would be. So the idea of having students around a research cluster was the initial reason we got involved with digital domain. Now, we didn't get involved, of course, until the state and the county and others decided to get the company to come, and we had nothing to do with that, but when they came, we started to work with them. Then we realized, wait a minute, if we ask an industry partner in digital domain, started to realize it would make sense to them to fund, to actually fund a new program where students would collaborate with that industry partner, in learning with us that A, provides funding that no one has right now in the middle of a bad uh, you know, recession, and B, it gives the students the opportunity to not just be in research next to someone who's creating IP, but to actually be in class with them. So this was what we felt um, um, an innovative way of creating a new program. And critically important to all of this, and I will say it was the great John Carnegie who was really uh, helpful in all this, and our prayers are going out to him today, but uh, critical to all of this was that when we go down this road with, with, with a company like this, we have to make certain that if they go away tomorrow, we're protected. We didn't expect them to actually go away the next day, but you know, we knew if we get in bed with them, we better be dang sure that we're covered. So we asked for money up front, and we put money in the bank, 
and we created uh, the Insta, we began proposing the Digital Media Institute. That's when Judd got involved in building the Institute. And we began building this undergraduate program where we decided we can put a new major with students and research. Critical to that program in terms of learning was that digital domain was not the only uh, partner at the table. And that's why the main reason we ended up getting involved was because the city of West Palm said, we agree and we will make certain in this deal that, that enough building space will be constructed so that other companies can locate with you. With that, we went into the agreements that Vicki is referring to. So for us, all along, it has always been about the opportunity for students to be associated with high levels of research and learning and not about the BFA program. So the BFA program has been funded and is created. The Digital Domain Institute, which was the mechanism that we used to get the digital domain employees from their computers to the classroom, is gone. And we're not interested in forming another relationship like that because we have a lot of interest from other industry partners in providing research. So we don't need, uh, you know, the, the BFA program works as is. Uh, we still have the commitment from the city to build the space. And we have now, and uh, obviously you can understand I'm not going to mention names, but we've been working on this for two and a half years. We have, we're in discussion with 14 different companies just to just figure this out. And so my interest, and by the way, at the end of the day, all I care about is the students. Look at my background and my history. I want these kids to be next to the brightest minds in the world. And I think what we have here is an opportunity to build a, a, a way to get them there. And the Research Institute will have, and by the way, these four companies could go away tomorrow because I agree with you, Mr. Morton. We don't have anything right now, Chancellor. We, we're, we're in these early stage discussions, right? But I've been down this road. I come from industry. I know a number of the players in these businesses. We're going to have industry partners at the table doing research with us in this research cluster, and it will be a great environment for our students to work in and learn in. I have a, um, um, Governor Kuntz has a question. Go ahead. It's maybe just seeking your opinion that will help you understand. Sure why that, whatever your opinion is, why it would be. It's the whole story, I mean, it's, it's interesting, but it's also you know, so unfortunate how this played sure. out. And, and you have an incredible program. Uh, the Chancellor commented on, you know, it might be debatable if it has nationwide acceptance. I would say it's not debatable, it's, it's a great program. All of this conversation, which isn't just occurring in this room today, but the, the just the, all of the issues and the concerns and the uncertainties are being discussed in a lot of places, uh, certainly around the state, maybe more than around the state. And my question is, how concerned are you that all of this conversation could damage the uh, reputation and credibility of the overall program, uh, sort of some guilt by association? Sure. Uh, because from my perspective, there's a risk of that, you know, with, with just so much of this talk and, and the program that was going to be designed to do one thing that's being redesigned to do something different, but no certainty there, and, and a great program in Tallahassee, but a lot, a lot, of, a lot of negative conversation about the West Palm uh, initiative. So how, how worried that, are you that it could actually cast this cloud over the entire program? Well, I will say, you know, I'm obviously in the business of public opinion myself, um, being a storyteller, um, whatever damage might have been done or could have been done by this initiative has been done. The question is, what do we do from here? Mm -hmm. I think if we pack up, go home, and say, you know, that opportunity didn't work, that could cause some damage. I think if we dust ourselves off, keep going with the original plan, and make progress, no one doubts in our industry that we're going to do well at what we do. Um, I think the opportunity for it to us to do the best would be in West Palm. But there's probably going to be a long-term conversation, not necessarily about Florida State, but about digital domain and all of the issues that came will come out about its failure and the process that uh, occurred to have them come in. And I mean, it's just going to be a topic of conversation, I would suspect. Don't know, but would suspect for a good long period. Of time. Well, the second they filed bankruptcy, I thought, well, this is a 12-month news cycle, yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, how are we going to get around that, right? 
So the question is, how do we fit in it? And we've actually done some analysis of that, looked at the, we haven't done it in a month or so, but about the 147 stories where our names were co-mentioned. And we were never mentioned negatively, and we were mentioned positively in most of them and neutrally in three. Actually, the, the one negative one was, was about the contract.